Welcome to the first quarter lunar week. This is our week of action from May 29th to June 4th, 2020. This is your energy update for what do we do with these new moon and Gemini intentions? Well, we have a waxing square between the Gemini sun and the Virgo moon. So this is a big mental week to get yourself moving in the quantum field. Now we have the help of the Gemini sun at nine degrees Gemini and the help of the Virgo first quarter waxing moon at nine degrees Virgo. So both of these are ruled by Mercury. So we pull in Mercury, we see what he's up to, to assist us as we jump into action and uh, really utilize the power of this waxing square. Now, a lot of times, or maybe in some forms of astrology, the, the squares or 90 degree angles are um, seen as challenges. Well, I like to look at this as an opportunity to grow and to show yourself what you're made of. <laughs> so we take this uh, building of energy, this, more, this extra chi in the cosmos, and we utilize that to resource ourselves to do more get into action, overcome, and show ourselves, again, how powerful that we are. Now, when you get your natal chart and take a look at it, find the Gemini ruled house in your chart and the Virgo ruled house. And that's where this waxing square is taking place. And so imagine a, uh, a creek and the water's moving so nice. It's so a healthy creek. It just, the water's moving. It's so great. Then all of a sudden, a tree falls across the creek and the water cannot continue moving, right? It's starting to build up behind the tree that fell. And so take this as an analogy of what's happening this week during a first quarter phase. So the water is still moving uh, behind the tree, right? It's still uh, in its uh, velocity and it's moving, but now it's getting stuck behind this tree. And so the weight of the tree has to be less than the velocity or weight of the water that's wanting to move through. So what happens is we get this square between the sun and the moon, and then we build up chi strong enough to break through and move that log or tree out of the way, and then the river and the creek is healthy again. So that's the vibration you want to tune into this week as you're getting your new moon and Gemini intentions into action because we're in 2020 and it's you know game on every lunar cycle every lunar phase we're taking full advantage of it to get ourselves where we want to be now with gemini and virgo being both ruled by mercury we're being shown that we got to move the energy in the quantum field which starts with the mind the mental body our thoughts our words our actions right so this is the focus and Gemini is really super powerful when it is focused, right? Because remember, it's duality. It's the two minds, the twins, this or that, left or right, yes or no. And so we want to bring um, our, our mental focus into a place of concentration. And so when I cast the chart for this week, when the sun and moon come in direct alignment at that 90 degree angle, and we get a, a prescription from the cosmic doctor okay how do we use this what's the game plan for this week and so the game plan comes to us like this so we have the virgo first quarter moon it's known as the counting moon and the counting moon is about being on the lookout for analysis paralysis you know uh gorged on data starved for meaning according to barbara marciniak so we want to be looking at where are we kind of getting mentally stuck by narrowing our focus too much and being um, kind of held captive, held captive by the details, right? Because that's Virgo. I want to scrutinize. I want to get in there. I want to research. I want to get a ton of data and then start to make my hypotheses. So we take that beautiful uh, mercurial energy of the researcher and then we put it in and we ground it through the earth vibration of the mutable energy of Virgo. And we say simplify, simplify what matters most. Now, remember, as we started this Gemini lunar cycle, Venus was conjunct, uh, Venus retrograde was conjunct Mercury at 20 degrees. So Venus is still part of this beautiful unfolding over the next three weeks. 
And so Venus is reminding us as she moves backwards in time towards the, the Gemini sun on June 3rd and 4th, they'll be conjunct. And so Venus is saying, uh, simplify, like the Virgo says, but what matters most to you? So continue your journey on uh, connecting with your values, discovering them, rediscovering them, and putting your focus on that which it has value to you, has meaning to you. And the rest, just uh, let it uh, organize that, like let it go, uh, declutterize that. You don't need it moving forward. So you want a nice, beautiful, almost like uh, in the Virgo definition of this uh, Venus uh, uh, search for meaning and beauty is like that minimalist kind of uh, uh, environment, right? Where everything's clean and clear, nice lines, things match. It's not you know, too busy, it's just free. You wanna free the space. So this is a great week for declutterizing and doing some feng shui. Okay, so the counting moon helps you get out of analysis paralysis by simplifying, Venus says, come in and uh, what matters most to you. And Venus also says, you know, spend time looking at beauty and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So I want you to be on your search for beauty. Make it a daily thing, real simple. You might get up in the morning, go for a walk, look for something beautiful that catches your eye, that draws you to it. Because Mercury, Gemini, and this mutable lunar cycle is, it wants you to keep moving and be uh, what's pulling your attention and move towards that gravitate and be curious why am I resonating with this or I want to move this way or I might be driving and for some reason I just want to go left instead of right let yourself do that because these are uh, communications from spirit and soul and your guides and these are your bread breadcrumbs these are uh, follow that path because it's a path of synchronicity so this is where you can find the most resource energy this week to help you overcome or take these opportunities to evolve, shift, change, and grow, right? We want to keep growing. Now, with the counting moon at nine degrees Virgo, the part of fortune showed up in the chart at 11 degrees. So when I first saw that, I said, oh, 911, what's going on here? 911 or 911. And so I did take a little, I have to confess, I did go into the chart of 9-11 uh, as opposed, I did the fall equinox chart and then I did a transit reading on 9-11 uh, and it was pretty eye-opening that what we do now helps shape the, what's possible um, at the end of August moving towards um, fall equinox in uh, September 22nd. So we have that 9-11, which is a um, energetic electromagnetic force field that can be inserted um, for you know, a little bit of mayhem. So we want to be overriding that by lifting up that positive vibrational energy on the planet so that when uh, we don't make a, a rich fertile soil of discord, conflict, opposition, duality, where weeds, of that nature can grow, take root, and become part of our reality. So what we do is we weed our garden, we fertilize it with positive thinking, uh, uh, emotions of love and joy and happiness and curiosity and neutrality. So this is a week of looking where you get triggered or you move into uh, conflict or oppositional thinking speaking in action, and you want to start clearing that away. You want to start sweeping it, sweep it like out, like with your Virgo broom and sweep it right out of the house of your mental body and your experience of looking at the world in that way. Because the Gemini sun at nine degrees, a Gemini is uh, looking at uh, mind over matter. It's telling us, hey, your mind is a powerful tool of creation it is a creative force so you want to learn to train the mind or i like to say train the dragon that is the creative force field in the universe and so uh the virgo or the gemini sun is saying it's mind over matter defy these laws of gravity or you might have this physical thing happening in in your world and perceive it in a certain way but what if you shifted your mind and overrided 
those old set of belief systems and uh, ways of looking at reality. If you change your perception, you get a whole new set of belief systems that then give you a new quantum field in which to create through. So that's a big focus uh, emanating from the Gemini sun. And Venus is moving backwards to conjunct that energy this week to give it even more uh, power of the divine feminine. Now, going back to the Virgo moon at nine degrees Virgo with part of fortune at 11 degrees, we have an opposition happening to Mars. Mars is 11 degrees Pisces, so uh, opposition. And when we look at part of fortune, um, it's our Dharma sacred work. But in order to activate that Dharma, you go into its opposite sign. So we go 11 degrees Pisces and look who's standing there, Mars. And Mars is saying, hey, do you want some warrior power? Do you want some like really good activated yang energy in your space to help you with these Piscean concepts? Right? So Mars is saying, I am the peaceful warrior, or I'm walking the spirit, the path of the spiritual adept. I'm learning how to be the hero, right? And return to source. And you know, crouching tiger, hidden dragon, I, I know when to, to watch and observe. And then I know when it's my moment to act with effortless and ease with the, with the power of the uh, dynamic energetics of the universe behind me, right? So I'm fulfilling my, uh, my ultimate uh, galactic feng shui, qigong, right? We want that qigong movement of, of energy through us so that we become this beautiful vessel of source, right? Oneness with creation individual state of the I am, but also at a higher state of oneness with the ultimate I am or the bigger uh, galactic center beyond, 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 right? It's infinite. But at the same time, now remember Mars is the ruler of Aries. And then we go, who's in Aries? Chiron and Lilith. Chiron, the wounded healer. Lilith, black moon Lilith, that is our shadow side, our shadow work, the power of that, of the dark, of the feminine energy, which is not what it's been told to us to be. It's way more powerful. It's not something to be scared of, but in the shadow are the gifts. But we've been told, be scared of that because so you'll never knock on that door and open it and go into that cave and see what's there. So Mars with this oppositional trigger from the part of fortune uh, polarity point and the Virgo first quarter uh, waxing moon is then lending this energy into Chiron because of the, their position in Aries. Now, when I was looking at that 9-11 2020 uh, moment of the astrological alignments of the planet uh, or planets uh, moving into that space, Mars, and the black moon are all conjunct Eris, the goddess of discord. So think about it. If you have a collective uh, unconscious energy that's stuck in duality, oppositional uh, energy, conflict, and then this kind of uh, power starts to move over this swirling vortex, then we have you know, recipes for uh, those types of superstorms in our collective experience. But if that goddess of discord is sitting in the space to help us break through old stuck patterns, and we have this positive energy of the Chiron as the rainbow bridge wounded healer, and Lilith, the black moon, to empower that because our shadow has been cleared, our filters are awakened, and the Kundalini is rising. So with Chiron, um, the energy is saying, I'm coming to bring this healing energy. And I want to let you know that um, I'm helping you release or find old stuck patterns and release them, right? Release and transform them. And Lilith, um, she's, you know, connected with the, the Garden of Eden. She's the original Eve. She's always kind of pictured with, you know, a snake moving up uh, and around her body. So at this degree that she's in, she's also uh, telling us it's a time of a kundalini rising, meaning that kundalini energy of our dynamic, powerful, feminine, creative force field is starting to move through our chakras. And so it is time, Virgo Moon says, to clean up those chakras. 
So when you join the Lunar Ladies Club, join us in the Lunar Ladies community, we're focusing on that. We're getting teachers in, we're getting information so that we can uh, you know, create a, a field of awareness and then saying, hey, let's do this together, build that collective tidal wave that helps everybody out because uh, you know, it's the power of the pod, strength in numbers. So when I go to look at next week's full moon lunar eclipse, July 5th, uh, over uh, the great attractor point uh, in Sagittarius, which is the high priest moon, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on because the symbol, I believe it's the Chandra symbol for uh, 13 degrees Sagittarius is under the light of the full moon shines upon the Sphinx and the pyramids. And I was just reading, so I love when these little uh, layers start to weave together, that, you know, of course, Edgar Cayce, who um, was born during this Pluto triangularity that Laura Walker talks about, um, his, I feel like his contributions to the planet are really getting activated this year. And one of the prophecies or readings uh, um, that Edgar Cayce brought to the planet for us was that there will come a time when secret documents, sacred texts are um, revealed, discovered under the right paw of the Sphinx. There's other channeled information that says, well, under the right paw of the Sphinx is the entrance to the mystical world of the halls of, of Amenti, right? And so here we have the full moon coming and the symbol is the full moon shining on the Sphinx. And I'm saying, let's lift up that right paw and see what's in there and take a, go, uh, take a journey and see what we can rediscover and reveal sacred texts and sacred uh, information that really reveals the true nature of us as human beings. Right? How's it get better than that? <laughs> so that's what's getting generated this week. So when you do your work of mind over matter, defying these laws of gravity and um, look, you know, finding those old stuck places, letting them go, cleaning them out, shedding your old skin, letting yourself grow and expand. We have this opportunity to take full advantage of the available energy and what's that we can utilize for our own personal growth. And when you do what you need to do for you, you contribute that to the greater good, and then it allows more energetic frequency availability, resource energy for other people to also do it. And then the more that we add to that collective good, the more that it's possible for the whole of the, the, the tribe to rise. <laughs> so I just wanna leave you with um, the uh, understanding of gravity according to Dane Rudyard when he was in his great work of the Sabian symbols. And so he's defining gravity as, you know, the universal binding force of the material world. So it's these magnetic bonds that keep us, or these laws of physics that keep us having this experience. But this experience is dynamic and quantum and changing and it's holographic and there are no really in the higher realms of, of energy at the subatomic level, <clears throat> these laws cease to exist because the molecular bonds break down and it's, it's free energy just continuing to move. <clears throat> so he's saying, pierce those laws of the physical to attain a higher consciousness of existence. And so this is, we're moving towards understanding what is immortality. And that to me is what's sitting under the right paw of the Sphinx is our true nature. And we aren't bound by these, uh, geo, uh, these magnetic bonding laws of the physical world, but we are, exist at such a higher frequency of, um, of uh, existence beyond the physical bonds that keep us locked in and pulled down to earth through gravity. So have fun this week. Uh, with this lunar psych or this lunar phase of, of jumping into action, don't sit on the couch, don't get tied up in your mind, move your body, move your mind, free yourself, clean, clear, simplify, go to lunarladies.com, read more in the blog post, definitely join our community, 
subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's a weekly energy update. I cast a chart every week for uh, the lunar phase of each lunar cycle. I'm on it for you. I've definitely got my PhD in watching the, the movement of the moon and what it means. I tell the story, I cast the chart, I give you meaning, give you ideas, way to implement the energy, because what I want for you to do is merge with a higher force field so that you can truly realize what you're made of.